Okay, uh, Helsinki, let's start with a short question. Which one of you are active Spotify users? Which one of you are using Spotify more or less daily? <laughs> Which one of you are active iTunes users? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank uh, you. We are going to be discussing mostly about the future of music, the future of Spotify, but let's start with easy questions regarding history. Uh, and let's go back to, to the um, year 2001, when, uh, when Ap Apple came, came to the market with iTunes. And, and I, I think that most of the people agree that the music industry didn't see it coming or whatever. They were sort of like, uh, and, and, and Apple took the whole market by, by, by storm. So what was kind of like the key mistakes that music industry was making in 2001? I think it's good. Well, I think uh, uh, the entire uh, digital movement started long earlier than, than in 2001. But it Apple was, so on, yeah. was, was uh, the first uh, successful player in actually uh, creating a, a platform that actually monetized in a legal and, and a com uh, convenient way. Uh, uh, but it could be argued also that the uh, piracy platforms at the time were even better uh, because they were actually outgrowing Apple by uh, you know, several factors uh, at, at that point in time. But, but what was the key mistake music industry was making at that time? They were blind towards downloading, for example. Well, I, they weren't even supporting uh, uh, Apple at the time. Yeah. They were sort of forced to... Uh, um, address that market that was uh, fragmented and plagued by uh, piracy. Uh, but, but I can't say that they were embracing Apple either. Okay, uh, th then we go towards the year 2006 and Martin was giving a sp speech on the Silver States and, and he was saying that pretty much everyone were laughing at Spotify, Spotify when they came at 2006. And, and so, so what was Apple blind about Spotify? Because they didn't see the streaming coming. Well, uh, yeah, no, they weren't particularly fond of Spotify. But um, I, I think, um, yeah, they didn't see it, right? I mean, you know, the classic case of, but I mean, it wasn't just Apple. I mean, the whole US music industry was uh, kind of blind to the whole thing. It was like, hey, it's a small little thing. We'll keep it in Europe. We'll see how it is. And it took, uh, took a while, but I mean, you know, the difference was that it really wasn't that. It was the artists in LA that, you know, Shaq and, uh, and the other guys from Spotify really got to and then got them to really pincer the labels. So it was really Spotify coming here and, you know, the artists really demanding it and saying, hey, look, this, this is a massively cool new promotional tool. And I think as well, the artists understood that it was going to change dramatically from revenues from downloads to we need our music to reach as many people as possible and therefore, what we can do with that, you know, from you know, concerts and, you know, merchandising and everything is going to be far greater if we've got a much greater reach that our music is reaching. And that's what I think the, the labels and particularly Apple didn't really understand. Yeah, and uh, I think it's also fair to say that uh, the labels are and have been historically very much uh, built on the idea of breaking new artists and, and promoting big hits. And uh, uh, with uh, the advent of the, of the access model, which was actually Spotify's invention, one, one could say, that logic changed. Uh, so instead of making money on selling you know, 10 million Taylor Swift albums, uh, uh, to just get Taylor take, out of the way right now. Uh, yeah. they, uh, <laughs> th that, that became increasingly a, a problematic value proposition because they were instead making money on, on 100 million streams of uh, Rolling Stones that was probably produced uh, 30 years earlier yeah. and then started to generate new revenues again, which never, no one really thought would exist. Okay, th then let's move towards 2014 and, 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 and to the future, because Spotify and we are blind towards something. So what, is some, what are the things which Spotify is not seeing at the moment? Because it's quite easy to laugh at either Apple or music industry or whatever, and, and so on. But there are things which you are not seeing. What could they be, if you speculate? Yeah, uh, I think that there are, there are a number of uh, uh, areas that sort of Spotify is also sort of a, a, a captive to. And uh, the fact that uh, most artists, and I would say the vast majority of artists, and even the big selling artists, they have long contracts and sold their, their rights to, uh, uh, to labels. 
And uh, that uh, is actually a layer that I think has to be challenged over time. And since Spotify has made its uh, sort of step into the market by befriending and being a part of the label structure, someone might come from the inside, outside and basically take a direct artist approach and be successful. I think that, that is probably a, a pretty good strategy for, a, for a someone who's challenging even Spotify. How, how worried are you about the Taylor Swift case? Meaning, are you worried is that, that that will happen again and again and again in, in the US with big artists in, in the coming years? Well, I, well I, uh, this is more like I cannot really speak for Spotify in yeah. this uh, regard. It's my personal uh, 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 thing is that when we launched in, like, in Scandinavia or, and then later in the UK and Germany, etc., we have exactly had exactly the same pattern that first the service grows like crazy and then some artists, very vocal artists, will start to complain that they're not seeing any revenues because they're seeing a, a disconnect between what they know are being streamed and what they're being paid by their labels. Then after a while that criticism goes away and they become delighted. And that's just the case here in Scandinavia, for instance. Exactly. Uh, Spotify represents some 75% of the total music revenues in, in this territory. And, and you actually launched in the US only, only 2011. Exactly. So, so I think Taylor Swift is seeing the massive usage uh, increase, but she's not seeing the money yet. Yeah. Uh, but she will see it, and then she will be just as delighted but, but, as Magnus Ugla and, and guys like no, but, nobody's but, heard do about here. It's all, it's, exactly. it's, <laughs> do you think that it's also, also part, part of the record labels are the ones to blame? I, I think, you know, it's uh, hard for me to say that I should blame them, yeah. but, but their, their structure with their payout schemes that have been developed over, you know, decades is certainly not playing in our favor here. Okay, then let's uh, speculate on the, on the competition. Uh, Apple, Apple acquired Beats with 3.1 billion or whatever, and they didn't buy head, headphones. I, I think that they bought Jimmy Iowai or the know-how there and so on. So what, what is Apple going to up? Because kind of like people are saying is that Spotify killed iTunes temporarily. And now people are saying is that Apple will kill Spotify within three or four or five years. So, so what is kind of like, what are they doing? Well, I think, you know, people are saying, you know, people, someone's going to kill Spotify for free and then Spotify just keeps on growing. And Spotify's user experience is just, you know, still the best um, by far. And I think that's still the key, right? Is that whatever you say about what everyone else brings out, I mean, they've got to bring out, I mean, I don't care what they do with the, with the big artists and, you know, you know, they may lock up a big artist, et cetera. But if the user experience isn't there, that, that artist is going to be forced to go back to the platform that everybody's using. So, I, I think that um, you know they will try. They, I mean, I'm sure that they're looking to do deals or something with um, with artists. But and the, you know they'll be saying I, I I could speculate. I'm sure there's more revenues or something that they're trying to think of. But look, at the end of the day, the revenues don't matter if nobody's listening to it. So, but but, but kind of like let let's speculate for one minute yeah. on this one because the rumors from Cupertino say, say that. Jimmy Iowine has completely rethought the whole music industry. Mm -hmm. What could it be? Could it be like kind of like skipping the record labels or whatever, skipping the middlemen? Some people are saying well, it's, I'm, it's I'm sure it's I'm sure it's very much like um, like Perry Huggins saying is that basically you know give more power to the artists. Um, I could you know that would yeah. make sense, but but again, I, I would say that uh, uh, such an initiative is probably uh, the only logical stand to to take because uh, uh, as uh, markets develop, you know, you're pushing out the uh, powers towards the end of ends of the uh, value chain to the consumers and to the creators, the original creators, and those in the middle, they sort of, they should be a lot more efficient than they are. And I think uh, Jimmy Iovine being a, you know, very astute uh, marketeer and, and uh, uh, he's, he certainly, he wants to, you know, cut out a piece for himself, which has, he has done before, you know, in the, in the middle, but he's still part of the old paradigm, I would say. And uh, he's, uh, and, and I must say that uh, Beats, for instance, when it was launched with, uh, with lots of marketing support, they failed miserably. Yeah. It the product wasn't good enough. Yeah. 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 But, but, but there's, there's kind of like 20 million songs in, songs in, in Spotify or whatever. What if Apple, Apple, in theory, is trying to get the 1 million most interesting ones out of their 
by promising them be bigger cut, cut on the equation of I, I still come back to it. I mean, even if it's a bigger cut, I mean, the artists are now s smart enough to know their music has to go everywhere. Exactly. You know, Taylor is one of the incredibly few that can sell that amount of records. I mean, the only one with, you know, that sort of record clout now. I, I just think they were going to go back to it. And, you know, at the end of the day, the artist is... And, and to be honest, I wouldn't be... I think those type of artists are actually... They should be worried about you know, the YouTube and the, the independent and the, the, the smart yeah. young, young artists that are using, you know, YouTube and Spotify in a yeah. far smarter way than the older, the, that old school yeah. type of method is using. They should be worried about the way these new artists are going to, you know, supplant them and, you know, sell, sell more records or sell, sell their brand better than I think they do. Yeah. Which brings yeah. us to the music key. YouTube is, is launching the new service pretty much this week or last week. What do you think of that one? I think it's uh, probably the first, uh, 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 first uh, differentiated service in a long time uh, because they are offering both uh, playlists and video. Uh, uh, it, what it sort of remains to be seen is how, uh, how that user experience can actually be stable because sometimes you will see a video and sometimes you will not see a video, and if you pull up a video that is uh, like a spoof remake of, let's say, All About the Bass or something like that, it may be taken down the next day because uh, the DCA, DMCA requirements. So uh, I think they need to find a user group that sort of accepts those uh, deficiencies in, in their content. Uh, but on the other hand, I think it's, it's an attractive uh, uh, sort of rich user potential in it. I mean, I think they have a user group that is yeah. accepting of those deficiencies without a doubt. I mean, but I think you just use it in different ways. I mean, so, um, you know, one of the big things for me is storage, right? I am not going to crunch my iPhone, frankly, with a huge amount of video storage yeah. from a YouTube playlist. So I think Spotify is the most efficient way of me listening to music on the go. But when I want to do it at a party, you know, there is video or, or the kids, you know, video comes into big things. So I'm going to use, I, I'm necessarily going to use both. I mean, it's, I, I, because they're different, really kind of different things. But, but interestingly, my daughter, for example, is 15, and, and she's and, and her classmates, they are using most of the music through YouTube of at course. the moment. Yeah. So, so have you been analyzing why is that kind of like... Or, because uh, it's free. Uh, and, and, uh, and I think that's, uh, I think, what artists like Taylor Swift should actually focus on, that on SoundCloud and YouTube, and there are a number of other piracy uh, services as well, you can get your stuff played millions and millions of times without a single dime in revenue. Yeah. And, and then uh, I think maybe now YouTube is sort of fixing that and, and uh, giving back to the music uh, musician what they are deserving for their hard work uh, and their art. Uh, but, uh, but I think currently uh, they are sort of shooting at the wrong target. Uh, we, we are, we, here, here in Europe, we are concentrating a bit too much towards West all the time. Mm -hmm. And you, fr Frank, for example, you're working a lot in Asia, and there's outrageous I amount of interesting innovations. I, mean, happening I, love, there. I love Asian <laughs> content and culture and everything, but so I mean, what, Asian what, culture what, what is can incredible. What can Spotify learn from, from Asia, or how, how well, will that affect? Well, it's really interesting. I mean, we're talking about artists and content, etc. So, you know, K pop. K-pop dominates Asia. You know, it was counter-pop, then it was J-pop, now it's K-pop. And the labels own the artists. It is the Simon Cavill model where they own absolutely everything. And they, you know, so their endorsements, their concerts and everything, and it goes through the machine and it comes out the other end. But the labels are very profitable because of that model. And I think that, um, you know, what Asia is, uh, has a huge amounts of interest there because brands and, um, you know, companies and startups can come to the labels and they've got everything there like so from an endorsement to the concert to the live gigs to any sort of endorsement I mean everything is there so it's it's creating a really interesting culture around media and and music that is um is fascinating and for a business it's easy to work with you know so you know while if you're trying to work in western world you know you've got so many different players uh so yes you may say the artist is controlled but the artist is very happy to be controlled so in that case you know. uh, did, uh, last week you, or did this week you released a cooperation together with Uber in in, yep. in the US, and, and so uh, can, can you kind of like briefly go through that one and also talk about possible new innovations which are on the same area? So what could you be launching in within the following 18 months, for example? Uh, well, I I'm I'm not at liberty to say what uh, the company is uh, launching, but I think the 
uh, the Spotify Connect uh, platform is really uh, groundbreaking in the sense that uh, Spotify should be available everywhere. You know, and in every situation, regardless if it's uh, like a party situation uh, through a, a little uh, gramophone uh, type of, of uh, device or in an Uber car uh, or uh, in a theater or something like that. So, so there are a number of, of uh, of places where you cannot access Spotify simple today. But with the Spotify Connect, uh, it, it opens up that opportunity, which, which was not there just uh, a few, few months back. But, but there was some speculation last year about Spotify also, also challenging Netflix going towards outside the music, for example, going towards the video or whatever. How, how do you see that one? Or do you see Spotify staying as a music service in the near future? I think uh, Spotify has its fair share cut out for, for itself. It's a huge market, the, Spotify, uh, the, the music market, and there's a lot of stuff still to be done. So before that becomes sort of a, pot, pot, a potential, I think there are, that's several years out if that is ever going to happen. Yeah. Okay, the last question. There's a lot of people who have companies, startups, or have ideas or whatever. If you would have a start, kind of like, if you, if you would, be willing to setting up a, a startup in the music scene or music industry, having all the know-how you have. What are the areas you would be looking at? I, I think I'd, I'd be focusing on the artists. Like, uh, you know, what else can you do for the artists in terms of the engaging with their fan base? You know, and all of the things that they do, whether they touch YouTube, whether they touch Spotify, you know, everything else they touch. I, I think in combining some of that data and how they can use and hit that market base with more consistency because each now they've got to have sort of different things for different different products I, I, that would be i think very interesting to an artist yeah, yeah I, I could add uh, i would even call it a manager in a box uh so if you come yeah. to me with a uh with a, exactly. a, a a business proposition that you know i'm going to uh, make something that uh, makes uh, the uh the 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 big management companies uh, uh much more scalable when, when they can work with a lot more artists and help them to really extract all those intels that are available on platforms like Spotify or iTunes, what have you. Now, when you, when you plan a tour, for instance, today, it's more like people are oh, we're probably doing Helsinki this year. Uh, whereas what you can do, you could in real time see if there is actually a positive momentum on those listening to your latest uh, uh, hit. But can, can you yeah. see Spotify doing that? Having a role in that kind of... Yeah. Spotify could definitely provide the data, yeah. but I think to be the, the, uh, the sort of the day-to-day -day contact with the artist and, and discussing with the artist where, how to develop his or her uh, career, that is, that is a different business, I think. Okay, the last questions. What were the last songs you were listening to in, in Spotify? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do I really have to answer you that? You have to. Um, okay, no, I listen, so, uh, so great band from Australia called Australian Crawl. Okay. I was listening to that this morning. Yeah, because we finally got some good Australian music on Spotify. Yeah, that's cool. I was listening to some Children of Bodom. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I've got a, can I ask one very quick question? So how, how many people subscribe to Spotify here? So yeah, that's, that's amazing. So how many people would actually stop subscribing to Spotify and, and only use YouTube as a subscription? So I think that's the answer on YouTube. That's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. All right, thanks so Thank much. Thank you. Thanks, man. <laughs>